variable density flexible foams. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the basic use of the variable density flexible foams from BJB. And if you're new to working with foams, it's a good idea to call up BJB and they will supply you with this little sample pack. It looks like a little cheesecake of uh, little slices of different foams. Everything from some of their uh, rigid formulas, some of their closed cell rigid formulas, to their really soft, uh, pliable, flexible foam formulas. Now for this video, I'm going to be focusing on my two personal favorite formulas. And those are the, uh, on the low end, the kind of cushion foam, uh, that would be the TC266 flexible foam. And then on the firmer, more like padding foam, that would be the TC284 flexible foam. And both of these are variable densities. Now what that means is you can adjust the part A to adjust the density and flexibility of the end product. And we'll get more into that in just a minute. But both of these foams can be adjusted like that. Now for these two foams, typically the most popular applications in my universe are for props like this, where we're backfilling a latex or polyurethane skin with a very soft foam, which gives it a nice flexibility. This is a popular foam for muscle suits and puppets and things like that, because it is just a very soft, pliable foam. And that is of course the three pound density there. And then on the 284, that's one that uh, is really popular for prop applications. It gets a really nice surface, really nice skin on the surface. And this is great for producing realistic fight scene props and padding application for theme park rides and that sort of thing. But uh, again, this is a firmer, more of a padding type foam. Now, before we get too far into the casting portion, it's important to remember five tips for getting good results with flexible foams. And these tips apply to most flexible foam formulas, but especially these BJB formulas. Number one, 75 degrees is an ideal temperature for casting foam. That will get you good, consistent results that's not too hot and not too cold. Number two, apply back pressure for better skin quality on your foam parts. Number three, you want to work fast. Remember that foam cures fast. Just by the nature of its chemistry, it will react and cure fast. You want to have all of your molds and everything ready to go, so you're ready to mix the foam and pour that into the mold as soon as possible. Now, number four, when you're casting soft foam parts like TC266, it's a good idea to take your parts out of the mold and compress those and knead those and massage those to break up any gas bubbles trapped in the foam. And that will prevent the foam from collapsing and shrinking like a raisin later on. So real important, as soon as you demold your soft foam parts, make sure you squish those around and break up those gas bubbles. Now number five, remember that firm silicone like a 40 short A or higher and resin molds are ideal for getting good skin quality and low distortion on your foam parts. So the firmer the mold is, the less chance you have for distortion when you're casting foams that expand and create pressure. Now it's also important to understand what the density means. When you hear that eight pound density or a three pound density, what does that mean? Well, what that's referring to is the density per cubic foot. So for instance, if we take a foam like TC266, when we mix that up, three pounds of that mixed in the 50A to 100B ratio. So if we mix up three pounds of liquid foam, that liquid foam will expand in free rise to fill roughly one cubic foot. And it's important to remember that that is in free rise. So as soon as we start restricting the foam, we change the density. So you need to remember that any restrictions you put on the foam are going to raise the density of the end product. So when you see an eight pound foam or a 10 pound foam or a five pound foam, that means that's the number of liquid pounds of foam that it takes to fill a cubic foot. Now I'm going to cast a few of these little foam hearts out of this mold. This is a TC5140 platinum silicone mold. This is a fairly firm silicone mold. Now the top and bottom of this are uh, melamine coated particle board that I drilled some holes in just for a very basic setup for venting this. 
but I'm going to pour several copies of foam hearts using the different densities. And we're going to start with the 50 to 100 density. And this again is the softer of the two foams, the cushion foam. This is the TC266. And again, when we mix it 50A to 100B, we're going to wind up with a three pound density in free rise. Now, if we pack that a little bit, we'll get a thicker skin and a higher density. Now, because foam reacts quickly, you want to make sure that you add your pigment to the part B before you add part A. So add the pigment, stir that in before you add the part A. And that makes sure that you have the maximum amount of working time as soon as you add your part A. Now, as soon as we add our part A, that's when we need to make sure we get everything mixed up thoroughly, accurately, and immediately poured into the mold. And real important also to remember here, because this reacts so fast, you want to make sure, especially if you're hand mixing, that you don't scrape out the bucket into the mold. If you do, you could wind up with uncured or improperly cured spots in your finished foam part. Now the second foam heart, and this one I'm going to cut out the mixing for the sake of time, but this is mixed up 30 parts A to 100 parts B. And again, we've already added our red pigment to the part B. We're going to pour that into the mold and allow that to rise. Now again, this formula, when we back off the part A down to 30 parts A to 100 parts B, that's going to result in a slightly denser foam that is actually a little bit more flexible. So if you're needing a more pliable part, we see this a lot for people making puppets and things like that, where they need that to be a more supple end product, they'll use that 30A to 100B. But it's important to remember that the 50A to 100B ratio and the 30A to 100B ratio, those are the envelope in which you can operate. So you can adjust the A anywhere within those two points and to achieve a lot of different densities. Now the 284, again, this is our firmer foam and this is the one that has the best skinning properties for doing uh, hand props and padding applications and things like that. And for this one, we're again, we're going to start with 50 parts A and 100 parts B. And again, I've already mixed in my pigment into my part B, and then I'm going to add my part A. Because again, remember, as soon as you add that part A, the clock starts ticking and you've got to move fast. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm using these little quick release straps. You can also use clamps to close the mold. Whatever works to close the mold and restrict the rise of the foam is going to create a better skin surface on the inside of the mold. Now again, all of these foam formulas have a fast working time and a fast demold time. All of these parts I demolded within about 30 to 45 minutes after casting. Now the final part here is the TC284 Mix 30A to 100B. And again, this is going to result in a slightly softer but denser end product. And this is going to have a much lower expansion rate than the TC284 Mixed 50 to 100. So there you have the basic use of the variable density foams. And again, you want to think of this as a starting point. The whole point of the variable density is to allow you the flexibility and freedom to adjust that part A to dial in exactly the density and flexibility that you need for your part. So that might require, say, 35 parts A to 100 parts B, but all of that can be adjusted according to your liking. And the way those kits are packaged allows for the maximum use of part A, so the 50 to 100 ratio. So again, just to give you a good visual on the way that works, the 50A to 100B on our 266, the cushion foam, you see that has really good compression, but it is, you can feel, when you feel these two parts, this does feel slightly firmer. Whereas this one mixed to the 30A to 100B, you can feel this is noticeably softer and a little bit denser. And then of course, the same arrangement on the 284. With our 50 to 100 ratio, you see it doesn't have much give at all, but has a really nice skin on the surface, has a little bit of flex to it. But again, this is ideal for padding applications and props and things like that, where you want a really nice skin on the surface. And then of course, the 284 mixed 30A to 100B, you wind up with a little bit softer part with a little bit more give to it, but it is a denser part. The best way to make sure that you get a good skin on parts like this is to put those into a mold where they're compressed a little bit and build up pressure against the walls of the mold. 
Now, when you're casting larger parts or big organic pieces like bodies and heads and things like that, a lot of these parts are much trickier for the foam to travel through this mold and get a nice bubble-free surface. So the best way to get a bubble-free surface on a low density foam like this is to first apply a skin into the mold. And in this case, this is a latex skin put into a plaster mold, but also you can use a polyurethane skin. And I even have some molds where I've used a silicone skin. So at the end screen, I'll be linking some of those other tutorials. If you're curious about uh, using a polyurethane skin or a latex skin with uh, flexible foam like this. So be sure to check out the end screen for those other tutorials. Now, as always, the links to all the products that I used in this tutorial will be down in the video description, so be sure to check that out. And I'll be following this up with some other tutorials that get into more detail about mold releases and different types of molds and all kinds of things about casting foam props. So stay tuned for that, but I wanted to keep this concise and cram as much as I could related to these two foam systems into this video. So as always, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, share this video with your friends because you never know who out there wants to make a latex polyfoam prop. So thanks for watching. And again, thanks for supporting the channel.